You should meet Misty Copeland by Lori Kalkoven, illustrated by Monique Dong. Level 3, ready to read. Misty Copeland. Introduction. Have you ever dreamed of being a ballerina? Have you wondered about the hard work that goes into twirling across a stage or flying through the air in a giant leap? But if you looked different from all ballerinas you've ever seen, but you knew in your heart you should be one? If you've ever wondered about those things, then you should meet Misty Copeland. Misty is the first African-American woman to earn the position of principal dancer, the highest level a dancer can achieve in the American Ballet Theater. She has also inspired young people all over the world to go after their dreams. Chapter 1 Before Ballet Misty was born on September 10, 1982, in Kansas City, Missouri. She had three older siblings, two brothers, and a sister. When Misty was two, her mother left her father. The family took a bus across the United States to San Pedro, California. Misty wouldn't see her father again until she was grown up. From then on, Misty was on the move. Her mother married and divorced two more times and had two more children. Each time her mother divorced, the family moved to a new house. Misty enjoyed being part of a big family, but all the changes made her feel worried. She worried most about making mistakes at school. She made up for that by getting to school an hour early every morning. She studied and got good grades. Life wasn't all school, though. Misty loved to watch gymnastics on television. She taught herself to do cartwheels, backbends, and other moves. Dancing around the house to Mariah Carey's music videos was also making Misty happy. When she was in middle school, she choreographed a dance. That means she created a sequence of steps and moves for herself and for her two best friends. They danced in the school talent show. Misty loved being on stage. I felt fierce, she later wrote in her autobiography. Chapter 2, First Steps. Middle school bought Misty new challenges. She decided to try to win a place on the school's drill team like her sister Erica had done before her. A drill team performs dance moves for a school audience. Misty wanted to be more than just part of the team. She wanted to be the captain. Misty created her own routine and danced her best. One night, she got a phone call from the team's coach, Elizabeth Canteen. Misty was named captain of the drill team. She loved being team captain. Practice was one place where she didn't feel worried. Coach Gantine had a background in ballet. She taught Misty some ballet moves for the drill team and saw how good Misty was. She gave Misty the idea of taking a ballet class at the local Boys and Girls Club. The Boys and Girls Club was another place where Misty didn't feel worried. The Boys and Girls Club is a safe place where kids can go after school to play sports, be creative, and have fun. Misty and her brothers and sisters went to the club almost every day after school. Misty wanted to make her coach happy, even though she knew nothing about ballet. She went to the class. She didn't have a leotard or tights or ballet shoes. For two weeks, Misty sat and watched the ballet dancer. She was afraid she would look silly if she tried to dance. But one day, she did try, wearing her gym clothes and dancing in her socks. Most serious ballerinas start dancing by the time they are seven years old. Misty was 13 when she started. Her ballet teacher, Cindy Bradley, saw Misty's talent from the very beginning. She knew right away that Misty was a special dancer. It wasn't long before Misty left the Boys and Girls Club to dance every day in Cindy's ballet studio. Chapter 3, Becoming a Ballerina Soon Misty started to feel like a ballerina. She took classes with dancers who had been training for years and kept up with them. Within a few months, she was dancing on points. 
or on the tips of her toes. It takes most dancers years to develop this skill. In just a few months, Misty was dancing difficult steps and soaring past the other dancers. At the same time, things were not good at home. Misty's second stepfather often said hurtful things to her mother and to her siblings. The family left him and moved into a small motel room next to a busy highway. Misty got a ride to the ballet studio with Cindy after school every day, but she had to take a long bus ride home. By then, ballet was more than a hobby for Misty. The world of ballet was a place where she felt safe and happy, a place where she was able to shine. The ballet classes were worth the hour-long bus ride home every night. Misty's mother saw how hurt her daughter, saw how hard her daughter worked. She saw how tired Misty was. She told Misty it was too much. She'd have to give up ballet. Misty was heartbroken. The next day, she cried as she told Cindy she couldn't come back to class. Cindy told Misty's mother that Misty had a chance to be a star. Cindy didn't want Misty to leave class. Together, Cindy and Misty's mother decided that Misty would live with Cindy during the week to be closer to school and at the motel with her family on weekends. Misty's weekends were often busy with performances. She spent less and less time with her family. After almost three years, Misty's mother told Misty that it was time to come home. Both Misty's mother and Cindy thought they knew what was best for Misty. Misty's mother wanted her to move back home. Cindy wanted Misty to continue to live with her and to dance. The two women went to court and asked the court to decide where Misty should live. Misty was scared and sad. She wanted to make everyone happy. Chapter 4, Misty Takes New York by Storm The court decided that Misty would move back in with her family and take lessons at a new studio closer to home after school. After a few months, her mother got a better job and they moved out of the motel. Misty soon settled into her new ballet studio, even though she missed her old friends and teachers. Misty continued to learn in her new studio. The following year, she was invited to a summer program at the American Ballet Theater in New York City. ABT is one of the best ballet companies in the world. Misty had wanted to dance for ABT ever since she had seen Paloma Herrera dance with the ballet company in the 1990s. Paloma was one of the youngest stars in the history of ABT. She was 15 when she moved from Argentina to New York to join the Corps de Ballet, the group of dancers in the background of ballet performances. Two years later, she was promoted to soloist. When she was 19, Paloma became a principal dancer. Misty knew that she had started dancing too late to become a principal dancer at 19, but she wanted to follow Paloma's path. If she made it to Paloma's level, she would be the first African-American woman to do so in the history of the American Ballet Theater. Now, Misty was going to dance for the same ballet company in New York City. I was ready to take the Big Apple by storm, Misty wrote in her autobiography, and she did. After she completed the summer program, ABT invited her to join them full time. It was a hard decision, but Misty decided to go home and finish her last year of high school. She hoped that ABT would make her the same offer. She hoped that ABT would make her the same offer next year. During that year, Misty's body changed. She became curvier than she had been before. Once she was able to dance again, she had to learn how to dance all over again in her new body. People began to tell her that she was too athletic to be a ballerina. Her strong muscles stood out. No one said that there wasn't a place in ballet for an African-American woman, but Misty knew some people thought that. She just kept dancing and showed them how graceful and strong she was. Six years after she joined the Corps de Ballet, Misty was named a soloist. A soloist is a performer with a special role in the ballet. It had been over 20 years since an African-American woman had had that honor at American Ballet Theater. The first African-American woman soloist had been Nora Kimball and Shelley Washington, who had joined the company as soloists in the 1980s. 
Now Misty's name was being added to that short list. Chapter 5, Twirling into History It wasn't long before Misty was standing out because of her incredible dancing. People outside the ballet world noticed her too. Misty starred in a commercial for a sportswear company. In the commercial, a little girl read a letter listing all the reasons why she could never be a ballerina, such as having the wrong body type for ballet. And at age 13, she was told she was too old to be considered. As the girl spoke, Misty twirled and leapt across the stage. Within one week, more than 4 million people had watched the commercial on the internet. The support of Misty's friends and fans helped her to keep doing the hard work to win the best roles in the ballet company. In the spring of 2012, Misty was picked for the lead role in The Firebird, a famous ballet. Misty was the first African-American woman ever to dance the role for a major ballet company, but she earned raved reviews. But dancing had also caused another injury. Misty needed surgery to repair fractures in her leg. Some doctors said she would never dance again, but Misty didn't give up. She worked hard and got better and danced more roles, including the lead role in the Swan Lake. The lead in Swan Lake role is the role every ballerina imagines herself performing. Dancing this role was a dream come true. Misty also wrote her autobiography and a separate picture book called Firebird. Misty twirled into history on June 30th, 2015, when her biggest dream came true. She was named a principal dancer for the American Ballet Theater. That's the highest level a ballerina can achieve. Principal dancers almost always get the biggest roles in ballet. Their pictures are also published in ballet programs, and young dancers all over the world look up to them. Misty is the first African woman to be a principal dancer in ABT's history. What's next for this unstoppable ballerina? Only time will tell. But it's clear that Misty will continue to inspire young people to go after their dreams. A few days after being named Principal Dancer, she said, You can dream big and it doesn't matter what you look like, where you come from, what your background is. That's the example I want to set and what I want to leave behind. Now that you've met Misty Copeland, wouldn't you agree that anything is possible? Dream big. But wait, there's more. The end.